Good morning, church. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Today I bring you words of great peace. For Jesus tells us not to have fear, but that we should trust that God has us. God's got this. That Jesus has been sent to be the way, the truth, and the life. And that is good news of comfort. And when Jesus is our guide, we experience great comfort in our lives. When we know that Jesus is our good shepherd and there's a path for us to follow, things feel right. I feel this way in my own life. When whenever things are going right, I think, oh, oh, God's got me. I am being cared for. I am being led on a path and I'm and things are going the right way and I watch my kids grow and all I have to do to to know that they're growing is just to simply mark their height on their birthday on the uh, way into the kitchen. I don't make them grow. God does. And and sometimes we put our heads down at night and we think all is right. All is right in the world. Jesus is leading me in great paths. But what do we do when we feel like Jesus is gone? What do we do when we feel like Jesus is not there anymore, that that the path has disappeared or that the way ahead has, has gone from us? I don't know about you, but this is how I experience doubt. I don't doubt that there is a God or that Jesus is the Son of God, those things make a lot of sense to me. I've spent a lot of of my life having comfort from those. But sometimes I don't know the way. Sometimes I don't know where Jesus has gone. I don't know where to look for Jesus. I don't understand the path ahead. And right now, i got to say, is one of those times. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what tomorrow's going to look like or a week from now or a year from now. I feel the way the disciples feel, like Jesus is leaving, that soon after the resurrection, now I feel again lost. Feels like Holy Week all over again. And what I realized in my quiet time and in my conversation with my spiritual director this week is that I am reacting to Jesus leaving with anxiety. And I'm in good company because the disciples do that as well. In this passage, this this passage of great comfort, John chapter 14, where Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. I am the way and the truth, and the life. When we have those words of great comfort, and we feel close to God, and then things go bad, and we respond like the disciples do with anxiety. Listen to these words. Right after Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. I'm going to go away, but I'm going to come back. I'm going to prepare a place for you, and then I'm going to come back. And then you will be with me. Where I am, you will be. Thomas, uh, and you will know the way. And Thomas goes, um, 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 Jesus, I don't know the way. How can I know a way? Just like Sarah's uh, map there that she's explaining to Krista what an old school atlas map looks like. How do I know the way? Can you mark it for me? Can you show me where I'm supposed to be in three days, in five days, in a year from now? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Do you feel the anxiety? Somebody say yes in the camera. Do you feel feel the anxiety of Thomas saying, we do not know where you are going? How can we know the way? And Jesus is scratching his head and he's like, why did I pick these guys? And Jesus says, I am the way, Thomas. I am the way. Have you so easily forgotten that you know me? And if you know me, then you know you can trust me. And if you know that you know that you can trust me, why is it that you're worried that I'm going to go away? You're responding with the anxiety of feeling abandoned. But that abandonment is a lie. Jesus is always with you. I am the way, he says, and the truth and the life. 
And then as soon as he says that, Philip goes, um, 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 Jesus, why don't you just show us the Father and we will be satisfied? And Jesus goes, are you kidding me? Like, this is like my last day and I feel like it's the first day of school. Like, like all of the teachers feel right now when they're like, I was just developing this momentum of like having students sit in a certain place and like I learned the learning styles of each and now they're at home and some parents are taking it seriously and some aren't. And I, I, Jesus must feel like that. One of these teachers are like, I didn't sign up for this. Philip says, why don't you just show us the Father? And Jesus goes, Philip, 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 I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Do you remember that whole thing we went through like 11 chapters ago in chapter 3? For God so loved the world that he sent his only Son so that those who believe in him, those who see him, those who understand him and are in relationship with him, shall not perish but have eternal life. And yet... The disciples respond with anxiety because Jesus is leaving. And I got to say, I get it. I understand that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And I also understand the anxiety of feeling like Jesus is gone. Not knowing the future and what tomorrow brings. The truth is that life can feel isolating. And sometimes the choices we have when we're in the, in the desert alone is either to wander without direction or just give up and sit down right where we are. Sometimes it feels like the option is that we wander aimlessly through life or we just give up. We just shelter in place. We just shut down. We stop growing. We stop going We stop learning, we stop longing, we stop following. Sometimes it feels like the lesser of two ways. And when that happens, we get to some dangerous theological territory. I bring this up because easily the worst translated section of the Bible is John chapter 14. And it's not even close. I won't get into the mansions thing You've heard me talk about that before, but today we'll talk about I am the way. So many Christians, so many disciples of Jesus throughout history have taken I am the way, no one gets to the Father except through me, to use their anxiety that leads them to a very narrow road. The path for many Christians has been so narrow that we can only go single file. And unless you're in my single file line, you will not find it. When we forget that our relationship to Jesus is what leads the way, we worry that those, there are those who are in and there are those who are out. Those who are on the path and those who ain't. And that's very scary theology. And i got to say, if you grew up with that, there's no better time than right now in COVID-19 to ditch the narrow path. Ditch the idea that only some people get to God and some people don't. That Jesus came and that you have to understand a certain pathway through the maze in order to find God at the center. That's not the way God works. But when we let the anxiety of the world take over, we lose that the way is for all people. And we start to convince ourselves that the way is narrow and that we are either in or out and that others are either in or out. The truth is the narrow way can ruin your life just about every way. Every path that is narrow ruins your life. When I was a kid, I know today's Mother's Day, and I've been thinking about my mom a lot. I wished that things could be different. I remember being in fourth grade, and my best friend's name was Robert. And Robert's mom made the best lunches. I'm telling you, this guy had a four-course, four-star meal in front of him 
every single day. She had tailored things to his likes. She would cut off the crust. Sometimes she would put in a note. Sometimes there were jelly beans and gummy worms. There, were, there was a well-balanced meal. And I remember wishing that Robert's mom was my mom. I remember wishing as I walked up to the table with my tray from the cafeteria that, that my mom could do what Robert's mom <clears throat> was doing. And those were back in the days when cafeteria food involved a regular diet of fish sticks. Who remembers fish sticks? When it was socially acceptable to give children the worst meat possible and then deep fry it and give it to them with tartar sauce. I remember walking up to the table with my fish sticks and cursing God for the mother and the lunch that I had. Robert's lunch was made with love, and mine was made with leftovers. And it wasn't until I got a little further in life that I realized my mom taught me how big God is, how big the world is, how God created all of it. My mom taught me to wonder and have adventure. She wasn't the kind of mom that was totally organized and got up early and made my lunch, and she wasn't, she wasn't suited to be that kind of mom. But it was then that I realized there's not just one kind of mom in the world. My mom taught me Psalm 139. In fact, when I was in college, she, she painted it for me. Psalm 139, which says, For you knit me in my innermost womb. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, God, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. For my mom's faults, she also taught me that I was wonderfully made. That like all of us, there was no one else even close to being me. She made me realize how wide the path actually is, that it's not just for those who follow a certain order, a certain way of doing things. I remember being a kid and worried about what I was going to be when I grow up because my dad worked in an office and he didn't talk to people and he worked in a cubicle and he sat at a desk And he stared at ones and zeros all day because he was a computer programmer. And I thought, if that's what it means to be an adult, count me out. I can't do it. So horrified that the road in front of me was narrow. Obviously, we wouldn't want a kid to think that there's only one way to be an adult in this world. What makes us think that there's only one way to follow Jesus? That there's only one narrow path for us, whether it be Lutheranism or ELCA Lutheranism, American ELCA Lutheranism. My mom helped me realize how wide the path really is. And it wasn't until I followed my mom into seminary that I realized when Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, I wasn't getting a roadmap, I was getting a guide. No one could show me the way except for Jesus because nobody had my path in front of them. Going up the mountain, as a lot of people say it, there are many roads, there are many paths up the mountain. And our goal as Christians who are followers of the way is to not tell others how to strictly follow our way, but when our paths cross with others up the mountain. We are to encourage them that Jesus is their guide and that even in times of anxiety, even when it feels like we're wandering hopeless and aimless, we are God's presence in each other's lives. Jesus was sent to us to show us the way is a way of love. The way is a way of loving your neighbors Jesus came down to earth as a guide to show us to forgive others, but also to learn from our mistakes, 
and not make them over and over again. Jesus showed us how to lift up the lowly and bring down the mighty. Jesus is an excellent guide for our lives, even in uncertain times. Even when we don't know when there's going to be a cure. Even when we want to say, are we there yet? Are we there yet? I don't know the way. Jesus is still an excellent guide for our lives. When I graduated seminary, we have to fill out this paperwork so that uh, we can do this dance of being called as a pastor. And that, uh, that piece of paper is called the Rostered Minister's Profile. And in it, there are 25 examples of how to be a pastor. And it tells you to pick five of them. Five great things that you can do out of 25. If my math is correct, and by my math I mean the internets, that means that there are 53,130 different ways to be an excellent ELCA pastor. 53,130 different ways to follow Jesus on your own path. And if there are that many different kinds of pastors, how many more different kinds of Christians ought there to be? Friends, we are called to follow Jesus. And I get that it's uncertain. I get that it feels like Jesus has left the building. But Jesus guides us each and every day through Scripture through each other, through prayer, through singing, through family, and through those who love us enough that we call them mothers. God always leads our way through the Good Shepherd. So please, siblings in Christ, hear these excellent words of comfort. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in Jesus, for He is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen.